For the past three weeks, I've been working on an isometric mobile game called Alette. Alette is this super chill puzzle game where you're a cube who can split to form smaller cubes and combine with other cubes to form bigger ones. Last week, I set the jam version aside and completely restarted from scratch. This week, I also did cool stuff. I, of course, started the week by doing a bit of planning. For the two weeks that I've been working on the post-jam version of this game, I've been using this website called Codex, and I really like it. Codex is almost set up like a trading card game. To begin, each task is represented by a card, kind of like Trello. Each card goes into a certain deck, which is just a category like art or code. And when you start working on a certain task, you can add that card to your hand. On top of all this, it has excellent time tracking built right in. You literally just hit this button to start working on it, and Codex will keep track of time for you. You can even see a full breakdown of how long you've been working on your project and how much you have left to go in the metrics window. Now, you're probably wondering what this has to do with the game. Now, I've only been working on this project for a couple weeks, but I think I've been successful so far because of good planning. I have a clear and focused vision for the project going forward, and I've stayed incredibly organized and motivated throughout the whole process. The reason for this is because I'm not planning like I used to. In the past, I tried to plan the entire game all at once. I would try and think of everything I needed to do to finish the game, and I'd throw that all onto a Trello board. But this led me to getting super burnt out because I had to spend the first three days or so of a project trying to plan it all. It was also really hard to manage when I had about a billion cards on my Trello board. Now, these things are Trello's fault. They were my fault. And don't get me wrong, Trello's a great tool. But in addition to these problems that I brought upon myself, Trello doesn't have free built-in time tracking. This meant it wasn't easy for me to do time estimates or anything like that, so I just omitted them. This meant that I didn't keep myself in some kind of schedule, which isn't good in the long run. Luckily, for this project, I found a few solutions. First off, instead of trying to plan the entire game within the first three days, I instead take about an hour each Monday to do a bit of planning. During this time, I make it a point not to plan past my current milestones. Speaking of milestones, that's another thing that's helped drive this project forward. I found it's way more motivating to work towards these one to two week milestones than it is to work towards the end of the project. With this said, there are some exceptions to my don't plan outside the milestone rule. Occasionally, something that I want to add to the game will pop into my head, so I just add it to the ideas deck. The ideas deck just acts as a place where I can pretty much write down ideas whenever I want to. In addition to this, I have a deck called Backlog. This deck contains actual tasks, not just ideas for stuff that are outside of the milestone. Anyway, enough talking about planning. Two of the core features in my game are splitting and combining. And in this milestone, I wanted all the core features to be done. And they were both pretty easy to implement. In the player, I check if we're colliding with a game object that implements the I Split Others interface. Currently, my spike script is the only script that implements the I Split Others interface. Because I'm using an interface, I can add more objects that will split the player later without having to change the code. I'll talk more about interfaces in another devlog. Anyway, if the collision's good, I then spawn two new smaller players and destroy the original big one, which actually works really Really well. The combining was also really easy. I first check if the player is colliding with a game object that has a sizing component. The sizing component has a public property called size, and I compare them to make sure that they're equal. If they are, I destroy the two smaller players and spawn in a bigger one, which again, works really well. With the core mechanics finished, I think it's time for the game to have some levels. But first, I need an actually fast workflow to make levels. And for this, I took a lot of inspiration from the Godot game engine. See, in Godot, each object is its own scene. So the scene is a player with a sprite node, a weapon node, etc. And in my project, I take advantage of nested prefabs to make these things I call scene roots. Basically, I make everything that's going to be in more than one scene a prefab. I then make a top level prefab, which I call the root, and stick a bunch of other prefabs as children of it. As an example, some of the children of the level root are the main camera, the player, and a tile map. And in every scene that I want to be a level, I just drag this in and just modify whatever I need to. I also have a different scene route which just contains things I want in every single scene, like the scene manager. Personally, I really like this workflow. Now, at this point, I thought I was ready to make some levels. But unfortunately, I found a bug in Unity's isometric tile maps. You'll notice here that the tile map's Y sorting doesn't work when the tiles are different, even if they're on the same tile map. So it didn't really make any sense why this was happening. Luckily, I managed to write a simple editor script that would loop through all of the scene cameras and the main camera to set their transparency sorting to the proper Y sort, which happened to fix my problem. Now, again, I was ready to make some levels, but then I realized that the player has no way of actually beating those levels. So I grabbed this block that I drew last devlog and put it into the game. I then added a script onto the winning block, which would first check if it was colliding with the player. And if it is, I fire off an event called on player win, which the scene manager subscribes to with a method that changes to the next scene. And this is pretty cool.
Okay, so again, for like the 50th time, I figured it was time for me to make some levels. But as usual, I found some other task to delay that. This game is going to be published for Apple and Android, so it doesn't really make sense to be using a mouse. Like I said last devlog, I figured the player swipes in whatever direction they want to move. And I'm using the new input system, which I'm still pretty new to. So I did what any sensible person who has questions about the new input system does. And that's of course, watching a Samyam tutorial. I mostly wrote my own logic for the swiping, but took a couple concepts from the video and really needed help setting up the input system. And it's of course linked in the description. And with that came Friday, so I had to start editing the devlog. As I've said before, I plan to release this game for Apple and Android, so if you have any suggestions that you think will make the game better, just let me know. I also have the codex board linked in the description if you want to see exactly what I'm working on. And yeah, hit like if you like, also hit like if you dislike, and please subscribe. And have a great day!